Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part two of my overloading methods. I'm going to go and open up my website here, javacjava.com, click on the pop-out menu, and select the Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down to the Method Overloading Part 2. Now in this tutorial, I'll be discussing how primitive type promotion affects which overloaded method is called based on the data type of the arguments. If you are unclear on the concept of type promotion, please review my Primitive Numeric Type Promotion tutorial before continuing. If an overloaded method exists with the exact data type parameters as the data type of the arguments, then that overloaded method will be called. However, if no overloaded method exists for the data type of the arguments and the arguments are byte, short, or char, then they are promoted to an int data type and the overloaded constructor with int parameters will be used. Float will promote to double and it will promote to long if no matching signatures exist. Gonna, this is, this is kind of confusing here, so we'll definitely go over a lot of stuff down here in the code. So I'm going to highlight all this stuff here. Hit Control c to copy. I'm going to move this off there. You could right-click select copy too as well. Now I've got a shortcut to my command prompt on my desktop. If you don't, you can right-click, go to New, Shortcut, type in CMD, Next, Finish, right? It's as easy as that. We'll open up the command prompt, type in Java C and press enter, you should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and um, watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. You'll want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash will tell it to go to the root. MD is make directory, Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to make a directory called um, method overloading2 and change that directory. Then I'm going to notepad method over loading 2.java. Okay, method overloading 2.java is going to be the name of our source code file. I'm going to go ahead and hit control V to paste that in or right click and select paste. It's up to you. File save. Okay, so Inside of this source code file, we have two classes, method overloading2 with the main method entry point, and I've got my good old class box here. Right? In the box class, I have overloaded numerous um, versions of the calculate volume method there. Right? And each one of these have a different signature here, and the signature, of course, is the method name followed by the parameter list inside the parentheses. So the first overloaded method takes three bytes, right? Byte, 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 length, height, and width, right? And when it's called, it will display to the console the string literal, right? In byte parameter overloaded method. And uh, it will return length times height times width as an int type. And the reason why I got this returning as an int type instead of a byte type, because you could have length as 127, height as 127, byte as width, and multiply those three things together and get way too large of a value to store back into a byte and end up with data loss. And by the way, if you remember from the type promotion video anyway, when you're doing arithmetic operations on bytes and you're multiplying them by each other, they automatically get promoted to ints. So when these are multiplied together, the result is going to be an int naturally. So it only makes sense to return for the return value to be an int as well. Okay. So then I've got another overloaded method here with short, right? And it'll do the exact same thing. It's got short, short, short for the method signature after the calculate volume overloaded method. And it will display to the console this string literal in short parameter overloaded method. Same thing here, length times height times width, right? Short types and returning an int data type. Same thing for the char. Right? And then the int has its own overloaded, overloaded calculate volume method. And the long has its own overloaded calculate volume method. And the float has its own overloaded calculated, um, sorry, overloaded calculate volume method. Now you'll notice the long here, I skipped over that real quick, is returning a long value. And float's actually returning a float value too as well. And double has its own double uh, calculate volume 
method signature to there for the overloaded method, returning length, height, and width as a double. Okay, let's go ahead and save this here, and we'll come back up here, and let's talk about what happens once we get into the main method entry point. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm initialize three variables of byte, primitive byte data type, right? BL equals five, BH equals five, BW equals five. The L, the H, and the W signify length, height, and width. Just being uh, lazy, I suppose, by not typing that all the way out, but you get the idea. So, then it'll display to the console this string literal right here, box with byte arguments, volume equals. And then, right here, we're gonna calculate the volume. And we'll do that by calling the new operator, which will then allocate and initialize a new box object and a reference to a new box object, I should say. And then it will use the dot operator to invoke the calculate volume method. Now, of course, since we're passing a byte, byte, byte as the arguments, right? It comes over here and says, do I have a byte, byte, byte parameter override, overriding calculate volume? And it says, I do. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom this one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put, you know, display this message here. Oh, one thing I forgot, I'm going to rewind here. When we initialize that new box, it comes down here to the constructor, right? And the first thing it will do when it initializes that box, it'll, of course, call super. Don't worry about what that is yet. I haven't gotten into that. But it'll print out a little dotted line here, right? And that's to separate all of these up here, okay? So the first thing it's going to do is it'll display that to the console. Then the next thing it's do is when it invokes this method here, it'll come down and find this one here, and it will say, display this to the console in byte parameter overloaded method. Then it will calculate length times height times width and return that particular value right before this plus right here, and it'll display that after that string literal. So box with byte arguments, volume equals 125. That's five times five is 25 times five is 125. Okay, we'll do the same thing with three short variables initialized here, and we're going to be specifying those short variables as the arguments, and that will cause it to do the basically the same thing, right? When we create a new box object, Right? We allocate it and initialize it. When it's initialized on this constructor, it'll go ahead and print off another dotted line, and then we'll invoke the dot calculate volume method here with the three short arguments. Now come over here, do I have three short matching parameters? Short, short, short. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one, print off this, return our calculation back, right? And display it up there. Okay, so you should get the idea now. So I've got, I'm repeating this for all of the primitive numeric data types. So we got char doing the same thing, int doing the same thing, long doing the same thing, float doing the same thing, and double doing the same thing. All invoking the calculate volume method with various different arguments of various different data types. <coughs> okay, let's go and save this. And each one of these, each one of these statements here should automatically pick which overloaded constructor to go ahead and run and print off this just to prove which one it's in. So, let's clear our screen, type in java c, method overloading 2.java, let's compile that, let's type in java, and let's strip off this, we'll invoke the method overloading 2.2 class, sorry, not dot class, and we get in the byte parameter overloaded method, box with byte arguments, volume equals 125, short parameter overloaded method, short arguments, 216, right? So we're getting exactly what we were looking up for up there, right? It, it figured out, okay, we're passing bytes, so let's go into the byte parameter overloaded method, right? We're passing shorts, go in the short parameter, and the char, and so on and so forth there. So all that's basically the way that works with that. Now, um, when we talk about type promotion, let's kind of specify what is going on there, right? Um, the easiest way to do that is, is with a long, you have to put an L on the very end of that, right? So right here, let's make the width, let's make this like 35L, right? So in the int flavor of this, where we're passing the int two of the int variables, and then I just hard-coded a long literal value in there, numeric literal value of 35L. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, 
when it goes to invoke the calculate volume method, it's going to see if it can find a signature that's integer, integer long. Okay? And it's going to come down here and it's going to say, wow, I don't have an integer, integer long. I have an int, 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 and I have a long, long, long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow my rules of promotion and I will then promote these two values, these integer values, to long values. Now I have a long, long, long. Do I have a signature that matches that? And yes, I do. So we should see instead of an int parameter overload method, well, it'll run this one in long parameter overloaded method. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Recompile. Rerun. And so basically, box with int arguments, the volume equals that, right? Now, in long parameter overloaded method, right? So it did. It promoted those other two int values, did all the calculations and everything like that. You can see where we still have our long down here, but it did promote it and ran the long parameter overloaded method. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this back here. So we'll save that. And now what I'm going to do is just to show you, kind of prove once and for all here, I'm going to just remove those completely. I'm going to remove the float, right? I already showed you that the int will, um, I'm going to bring this back over here and scroll back up to the top up here, right? Int will promote to long if no matching signatures exist. Float will promote to double, right? And byte, short, or char are promoted to int. So we're going to do, we're going to demonstrate that very that very thing here, right? So we have byte, short, and char. I just removed the overloaded methods for byte, short, and char, and I also removed, removed the overloaded method for float, right? So each one of these should be, the float should automatically promote it to doubles, because then I can't find them. Same with the byte, it'll be promoted to an int. Same. The short will be promoted to an int, and the char will be promoted to an int. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen. Recompile, rerun, and so we got just that. So the box with byte arguments, int parameter overloaded method. So it did, it promoted all three of the bytes to int. Same thing here with the shorts, short arguments, right? Int parameter overloaded method, char, int parameter overloaded method. Int, of course, is the same there, right? Long is the same. We're not uh, promoting any ints or longs in this particular example. And then box with float arguments, it got promoted to a double parameter overloaded method, right? So everything got promoted there. You can see with the promotion from float to double, something lost a little screwy data here. So got some weird stuff way out there. So, but anyway, that's the way that works. So um, I'm just gonna leave you with some final thoughts. I'm gonna close out of this, close out of that, and I'm gonna bring this back over here. So as you can see, overloaded methods are super easy to implement, and the Java compiler takes care of selecting the proper method to invoke. Type promotion applies not just to arithmetic operations, but to method, method overloading as well. So you definitely want to understand the rules of type promotion, you know, to, to further your understanding on, on uh, method overloading. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this off screen, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.